what did Falcons do? Rise up! Welcome to Rise Up Reactions, the show where we talk all things Falcons, the NFL, Georgia football, Georgia sports, and in general, the sports news of the day. I'm your host, Dr. Lee Denning. I'm a board-certified family medicine physician practicing here in the wonderful state of Georgia. Today, we're going to be look, taking a look back at the Falcons' 2021 defense. Now, I have referenced this several times in my videos as the cornerstone of our woes from the last year. And really, if we go back and look at our, our defensive stats since the Super Bowl run in 2016-2017, We've been really bad on defense overall, and that's been why we haven't been able to make a big run back to the Super Bowl, or really a deep run in the playoffs since. It's been pretty tough sledding since that uh, ugh, trouncing by Tom Brady, the 28-3 blow-up Super Bowl game. But uh, anyways... I remember that very well. I remember being at a Super Bowl party and watching the magic fade in the third quarter as we go into the fourth and watch Tom Brady just crush our hopes and dreams. And what does he do as soon as he leaves New England? Comes to Tampa Bay where we get to freaking frack and see him twice a year. So anyways, the Falcons in 2021 were very bad on defense. There's a couple of really key stats that are going to highlight why we were so bad, and I want to use those as a reference of why we were bad in the other categories. Just to start out with a couple of things that are either bright spots or eh, meh stats, to look back, we had guys like Deion Jones, one of our veterans still on the team, had 137 tackles, which was more than 50 50 more than the next best player on our team. He had uh, one forced fumble, two sacks, and unfortunately those two sacks were actually team leading. So we were not very good at putting quarterback pressure on. Uh, one of the surprises from this past season, and I would say hopefully this sticks going forward, A.J. Terrell became a shutdown corner of the last year. And really and truly he had 81 tackles, 16 passes defended, three interceptions for a team leader, and one forced fumble. And then Grady Jarrett is really kind of the best player on our defensive line. He had 59 tackles, one sack, and six quarterback hurries. And overall, the one team stat that we actually didn't do too bad on compared to the rest of the league, even though we gave up a ton of yards through the air, we were actually eighth overall in uh, yards after catch. So we actually didn't do too bad once somebody caught the ball. The problem was we were giving up just a ton of yardage. You didn't have to have a lot of after the after the catch yardage. You were just getting catch after catch after catch. So the things that we were just kind of okay on, again, A.J. Terrell is a big reason for this, but our passing yards allowed. We had 3,952 passing yards allowed. Not great numbers by any statistical category, seeing as the best team in that category uh, only gave up 2,771 yards, being the Buffalo Bills. Um, but again, that means that we finished 18th overall in uh, passing yards. We were 21st in interceptions. Not Again, not a great stat overall, but certainly not something that was just terrible. We did have 12. The best team had 26. The worst team had 6. The worst team being the Las Vegas Raiders. So, again, not a terrible stat, but just eh, meh. And then we were 12th on passes defended, again, in large parts uh, thanks to the rise of A.J. Terrell, a guy that I arguably was not very high on after his rookie campaign. It does seem to take corners quite a while to develop in the NFL, and in his second year, he has turned into the guy that I really wanted him to be and thought that he could be. But again, I was not really happy with his rookie campaign, and he just proved me wrong this past year. So, things that we were bad at... <laughs> Oh boy, let's get ready for the list here. And I do have the website pulled up so that I can kind of reference this and make sure I'm correct. But let's start with the most damning stats of all here. We were 32nd in both sacks and in QB pressures. So, as far as sacks go, we had a grand total of 18 sacks. Yeah, that's not good. The next worst team had 29 sacks. And give me a second, I will tell you exactly who that is. The next worst team, the Philadelphia Eagles. So as bad as some of the teams, you know, we had Jacksonville, Houston, Kansas City, Detroit, Philadelphia, all of them rounded out the bottom six, but the Falcons 
were 11 worse than the next worst team. As far as quarterback pressures or QB hits, we had 59 QB hits total last year. The best team in the league for QB hits last year was the Miami Dolphins with 129. We couldn't even amount, we couldn't even get half of that. We were terrible at putting pressure on the quarterback, and I would make the argument that that really kneecapped us and caused us to be in the position that we were in for all of the other statistical categories. We just couldn't stop anybody. Another thing that we were terrible on, we were 32nd in plays per drive at 6.7, which was more uh, 0.3 more than the next worst team. We were 32nd in two-point conversion stoppages. We had six two-point conversions uh, completed against us out of a total 10 attempted. And yes, we were the league leader in two-point conversions attempted against. And then we were 31st in all touchdowns allowed. So we were keeping opposing offenses on the field, keeping our defense on the field just gassed out of their minds. We weren't putting pressure on the quarterback, and we weren't sacking the quarterback. So all that together, you got guys that are having three, four, five seconds to find somebody open. If you give a quarterback at a professional level that much time, they are going to find somebody. You just can't do anything else about it. So other stats that were really bad. We were 29th in points allowed, offensive points allowed, with 459 total. And again, the best defense in the league last year for points allowed was the Buffalo Bills. They only allowed 289. So we were almost 200 points worse than they were. Uh, 26 in yards allowed, offensive yards allowed, at 6,194. We were 27th in rushing yards allowed at 2,242. Uh, which is more than 100 yards per game allowed to opposing running backs. We also just coincidentally happened to be 27th in rushing touchdowns allowed as well, and also 26th in passing touchdowns allowed. Uh, we were 28th in scoring drive percentage, meaning the percentage of times that a that your the opposing team has the ball and finds either the end zone or a field goal. Our percentage was 44.7% of the time. So almost a coin flip if an offense was going to score on us or not. That's really bad. <laughs> really, really bad. We were 29th in percentage drives in the turnovers, meaning you know, we could actually force the ball into our hands and, and give the you know both the defense a break and surprisingly give the offense you know potentially better field position or deny the defense of or sorry, deny the opposing offense of you know a scoring drive. And again, we were bad in those categories. So what does this mean for us? What does this mean for us overall? It means that we need to focus hard on putting pressure on the quarterback going forward. Now, I think we've made some interesting moves in regards to that. If you'll permit me for just a second here looking back. Um, we did have some free agent signings that are you know, notable here that may help out. The biggest one, I think, is Lorenzo Carter. Again, he is a defensive end coming from New York Giants. He's been with them for pretty much all of his career to this point, and he's a former UGA guy. He had five sacks last year. Again, Deion Jones, the guy whose number I'm wearing, he had two and was our team leader. Again, this is terrible. It's really, really bad. We haven't had a true edge or a guy that could you know, sack the quarterback and potentially get that you know, eight to 10 sack range since the 2016 campaign. So I'm hoping that maybe with him we get back to it. I'm hoping that Rashawn Evans has a little bit of a renaissance in his career. Maybe he can add three or four sacks. That would be conservative. I really, honestly, I hope he gets about six or seven. That would be really good. And just between those two guys, if they come in and they have, you know, 12 sacks between them, that's almost our entire team total from last year. And it's going to dramatically help out with all of these other things that we were talking about. So that's my thoughts on what the Falcons did last year on defense. It was our worst feature last year. Not that the offense was much better, but again, the offense didn't help out because we didn't score a whole lot either. I'm going to talk about the offense in another video, but definitely we need to be focusing in the draft on building our edge rushers and on continuing to bolster our secondary. Whatever we can do to add sacks to our stat, uh, statistical category will do nothing but help us for the future. But that's what I think. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you like this, please smash the like button and consider subscribing. It would really help out the channel. But until then, rise up.